Okay, we're back in New York City for Big Data Week. This is SiliconAngle.com's coverage of Strata Plus the Dupe World. This is the Cube. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, and all the actions happening here in New York City for Big Data Week. Earlier in the week, we were in Las Vegas for IBM's Information On Demand, and we got the Big Data World covered like a blanket on SiliconAngle.com and Wikibon.org. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle. I'm joined today with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante at Wikibon.org. We go for free research, peers uh, collaborate, we solve challenging problems, and we're here with Steve Milton, who's the Chief Technology Officer of Place IQ, Next Generation Location Intelligence. Steve, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, to have great you to be here. Yeah, here at Strata, great, great that you just came off of uh, two days at IBM IOD, dropped in here. Awesome. Innovation. <laughs> We're geeking out on databases. <laughs> we just talked to a CTO at Sybase, geeking out on concurrency and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, so it's hot. I mean, the, the technology space for databases and data is hot. Yep. Uh, so I want to get my first question. What's your take on all this? Like, you know, as, as a tech guy who's been in the business, what do you see out there? What's the big e enabling technology? Well, I think the enabling technologies that we've seen as we started our company is really all around using the cloud first for the economy of scale, the ability to scale out as you grow a startup. You know, you're not sure how fast it's going to grow and when it's going to grow. So I think that ability to be reacting quickly as your market grows is very important to us and using your money wisely. And then on top of that, putting in the data analytics of something like a Hadoop stack to be able to process billions of records in a very short amount of time. There's, you know, gigantic quantities of data, much more than we've seen historically as data warehouse and database types of people. So the ability to take in billions of records, uh, get your hands around that data and understand it, and then turn it into something meaningful and useful for our business customers is what's exciting Let's to us. Let's talk about your company, Place IQ. So give the folks out there a taste of the business, of the company, and what's some of the under the hood type configurations that's, that's driving your business in terms of load and, and, and um, sure. So Place IQ is mobile audience targeting and insight. So basically we take information that is streaming off all kinds of sensors, people with mobile phones, smartphones, GPS devices, business data that has you know, so sensors on it. Um, so it's massive quantities of information. It's very specific to location and time. Uh, billions of records, terabytes, if not petabytes of data. And we put this together into a database, merge it, cleanse it, put it into 100 meter tiles, and then use that information to be able to identify in a given location who is the person who's there, and what's their most likely behavior? What are they probably doing right now? Or what are they most interested in doing right now? So with that detailed map of the world, like no one's ever seen, we're able to help brands connect with their customers in ways they've never been able to do before. And you have a lot of investors behind you, some big names. Um, yep. How much did you guys raise? So we, uh, we're still kind of closed-lipped about that. We had a uh, Series A recently with US Venture Partners, but you know we choose to keep the amount quiet. There's a lot of names in there. It's been a big round. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> a decent size, but I mean, you know, I mean, on, uh, in terms, we're very efficient. We can <laughs> use a, a very small round and use it very like efficiently. So, so obviously mobile, we had one guy in the cube said that the iPhones, the NSA's wet dream in terms of what they used to pay for sensors data. Right. Now you have mobility, obviously it's a big thing, all kinds of fraud detection applications. Mm -hmm. so, so you're in that kind of business. What are the big things that you're seeing enabling in that marketplace? What are, the, what are the top things that you're seeing for use cases? And also, what's the data volume like? What's the data flow look like? Yeah, so we're in ad tech, right? And, and just to give you an idea of the scale there, people serving ads to mobile phones and you know, kind of reaching out to their customers. Our partners that we work with there are doing billion records a day type of volumes, right? So this is huge volumes. And we have to ingest that information quickly, be able to bring it online and make sense of it, and then turn it around in a way that it can be consumed and used to provide a better experience for customers on their phones. Okay, so you're bringing in a lot of diverse data sets. Uh, I, I presume performance, reliability, stability, these are all crucial mm -hmm. things. Right. Um, so how do you architect as a C CTO, how do you architect uh, that problem? Give us a little insight. Right. So we use two pieces to our stack. First is Hadoop, where we have horizontal scaling and we can build multiple clusters. So we have the data copied into multiple locations. Uh, that way we are redundant and fault tolerant. And you know that's in itself a big issue. If you have billions of records and petabytes of data, duplicating it to try to be more consistent and reliable was a costly activity 10 years ago. You know, the costs have gone way down. So we really use very simple techniques, but they allow us to have this information online and ready and accessible real time. 
we also use in-memory analytics. So a second piece to our equation is loading this data into memory only when we need it. So the idea is we stream the data down, look at a subset of it in memory, and then build our models against that. So that's where we're bringing in, you know, sort of a real-time spin-up of an in-memory analytic solution from Cognitio and bringing our data into the system real-time. So in-memory, you know, does a lot of attention memory. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the big guys like, you know, SAP, other solutions like Alignment and RAM, uh, or Oracle Open World, uh, this is what they're marketing there, and mm -hmm. Oracle invented that, so. Yep. Um, so that's all good, you know, it's a lot yeah. of interaction going on. So, so talk about um, Cognitio, the, the tech behind it, um, how it's different from some of those, you know, ones that people might be more familiar with, and why you chose. Right. You know, Technology. So what's interesting and what attracted us to Cognitio was that they were working with Amazon, so we could actually deploy a high-performance compute cluster in the cloud, which again to a startup was very important. We didn't have to buy the hardware, scale it up ourselves, manage that infrastructure. So we can turn on a, an HPC cluster from Amazon, get you know somewhere around you know 24, 32 nodes or CPUs working for us in a highly high bandwidth, high network environment, and then have Cognitio stream the data into memory and do the processing we need to do and then shut it down and go away. So that allows us to be very cost efficient because we don't need to do these jobs 24 by seven. Generally, these jobs are something where we prepare the data, get it ready, load it into the system, do our learnings, and then go away, right? And, and then publish our data and make it useful to our customers. Okay, so um, can you talk about the diversity of the data that you're, you're dealing with? H how are you architecting for, for that piece? Right. And maybe talk a little bit about the data sources. Sure, and that's another area where you know it's interesting to use to do for a NoSQL type of solution because we're getting new and different data sources every day. So we do everything from basic cell phone trace data, you know, just looking at, you know, where is a phone and you know, just uh, going through space and time. We get search results, hyperlocal search results, application usage, so what types of apps are people using and how are they using them event data, so we also bring in listings that are maybe not real time, but you've got, you know, sort of the community crowdsourced event listing sites and things like that. So, you know, people out there on their mobile phones are starting to annotate everything going on in the world. They're kind of our reporters out there, right? <laughs> so we grab all this data, um, you know, it's very diverse. We have to bring it onto the system and then kind of merge it together into our models for analytics. So using a NoSQL solution, we don't have to struggle with building the schema, morphing the schema every time a new data set comes in. We basically use a document-based approach. You know, data has attributes, and as new data comes in, we just figure out how to blend that into the system. So it's very fast to bring a new data source on and include it in our pipelines. Okay, and then, so you, you take all this data in, you, you do the analysis, and then mm -hmm. you're providing context to that data, and then what happens from there? Take us through the sort of value flow and right. how it gets out into the you know your customers' hands. Yep. So you know we'll take these streams of data, we we cleanse them and make sure they're accurate. That's one thing. So some of this data may not be location accurate. We have analytics that helps us understand that and make sure that the information we're looking at is really about the location we're thinking about. So there's a geospatial issue there. Uh, we then also have this data coming in from multiple sources. We have to deduplicate it, right? If multiple people are, uh, you know, blogging or talking about the same event, I want to make sure it only becomes one event in my system. So we kind of merge these data sets together, understand everybody's talking about the same thing from these multiple feeds. And then we put it through a taxonomy. We've got a 4,000 um, element taxonomy where we classify the data into attributes of a location that we think are valuable and interesting. Once you have that data processed down into that taxonomy, that's where our data scientists come in. So they start to look at that data, do machine learning algorithms against it to really start to train against the audiences that we think exist at those locations. So we're turning this information into basically the understanding of the basic demographics of who might be there, the type of person, not personal data. It's not John Smith, it's just that this person is a business person or it's a mom out shopping and running errands, right? The general nature of who that person is and then their behavior. Are they currently working? Are they currently recreating? Are they with friends? Are they alone, right? So we see these basic behaviors, but these are the things that allow a brand to connect with their customer effectively on the mobile phone. So how does that connec connection occur? So basically we'll take that final predictive data set, we load it in through partners onto the uh, ad serving networks and in real time, as you fire up your phone, an application will pass the location and we will provide 
prediction based on that location and time uh, as a data set, and then the application can basically decide to decision against that, right? In our most specific case, it's ad tech, and we're deciding what ad to serve to a given customer. Make that ad relevant, right? If you're going to take my time and if you're going to consume some of the space on my mobile phone, I'd like that ad to be something that I, I'm interested in. So geospatial, we were talking to Jeff Jonas of IBM earlier this week. I was saying that we were at uh, IBM IOD, and he, mm -hmm. he made the comment that geospatial is superfood. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, uh, and so you know that got our attention. Yeah. Now, uh, Steve, where are we in terms of, you you, your last statement was right on. It needs to be relevant. Yep. Where are, are we in terms of you know the relevancy spectrum? Because um, you know we right. all get, we get ads, and Frankly, most of them aren't relevant. Right. So how do we do better? <laughs> Where because we're everybody's not using <laughs> Place well, IQ. Well, okay. Yet, right? So talk <laughs> about that experience of the Place right. IQ user. Yeah, I think it's evolving, right? So this this uh, ecosystem is developing rapidly. But right now, I'd say most of the advertisers are focused on just serving the ads up and kind of taking an online model and transitioning it to mobile. <laughs> yeah, right. So they just put it out there, analogy. get some impressions, and exactly. And part of that is is I think education of the customer as well. You know, the customer is still trying to understand what the mobile phone is and why it's different and how it's different how that means I have a different relationship with my customer. So in some sense, we have to be patient because we're an enabling technology, right? We can't make it happen. But we do see that you know the most forward-thinking agencies out there, and certainly the leading Fortune 100 brands out there, are starting to understand this. You know, The light bulb's coming on. I'd say in the last year, what we've seen is their experimentation with the mobile phone and how to reach out to customers. But we feel that in 2013, we're going to see significant growth, that people are going to reach out and really do things So all you words for Friends users, you're going to be <laughs> seeing ads that are that's much right. more relevant. You'll be clicking, you're going to spend more time <laughs> clicking ads than you are playing Steve, Words for Friends. Steve, so putting the ad stuff aside, because that's obviously a good use case to show the tech <laughs> out there, talk about the, the Cognitio solution that you have. Because yep. that's really kind of the interesting thing to me. I, I met the folks out in IBM uh, IOD, and the management team's got a lot of experience in, yep. in this area. Wh why, what's what about their tech that was interesting to you? Yeah, so uh, it really was their focus on an in-memory solution that was key to us because we needed this massive amount of information to provide insights very quickly because we're doing all kinds of hypotheses and what-if analyses, right? So the more I can do, the better my NSRs, are, the smarter they get, right? Traditional yeah. BI, but you know, at a larger scale of data. Yeah. <laughs> um, but their partnership with Amazon was really what sold us or differentiated them to us. You know, the fact that they would work with Amazon and do this by the drink, where you know, we, we don't license Cognitio annually. We basically pay as we use it. So that was very attractive to us, because again, in this data yeah, world. Yeah, you're an agile startup. You don't yeah. have the big pile of money to yeah, pay. And yeah, and for I the think big systems. Even the bigger guys, you know, I wonder if their infrastructure is really being used 24 by 7. Yeah, right? yeah, I think yeah. a lot of people are going to look at this and understand it's not just websites that have peak loads and variability. You know, your data analytic load is another area where it tr tends to be variable, right? You know, analysts will come in and, and work on a problem for a week, but then they go away and, and probably do some other activities, right? They're not yeah, just yeah, hammering yeah. the system all day long. And your success with the system has been from a reliability standpoint. What's the, give me a rock solid ten being great, one being poor. Yeah, no. I mean, it's, it's where are they in the spectrum? It's great. You know, I'd say they're. It's a new system, and and certainly they're. You know, kind of learning how to work with Amazon and spin those clusters up seamlessly. But it's an eight. You know, I mean, it's. You know, so I'm, I, I'm a startup guy, so <laughs> I'm okay with like a, a little rough edges. But you know, the leading bleeding technology. The oh, next time I see those guys, I'm going to ask them if they're standing in line behind uh, Adrian Crockett from uh, Netflix. Yeah. Netflix gets gets to cut the line. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially on the solid state. I, I heard that through the grapevine. But well, yeah. Netflix is running all their stuff on Amazon. Right. You know that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So they've been yep. highly successful in debunking mm -hmm. the myth that you can't run your business on Amazon. Although I called Amazon the junkyard uh, dog <laughs> of uh, cloud because you could you could assemble your own stuff, which actually yeah. is attractive to uh, to startups. Yeah, um, but EM they've had some EMC and others will it would say no, that's not a solution. But they've had we had to talk about it. We've, they've had some high profile outages. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you know Absolutely. the probability that it's going to happen to that was a, uh, uh, a low, DC power uh, okay. issue. Yeah. But that's why we do. But Amazon our data. have some other ones. So how, as you as a CTO, how do you you know architect around that? Right. So you have to be in multiple availability zones. As, as they recommend, and, and that's really the key issue there, right? Yeah, and um, that wouldn't have solved the Netflix problem. I understand well, that's that. Why that's, the that's why we talk about Nirvonics, for example. Yeah. Nirvonics has an awesome cloud solution because they have that fa failover. Right. So a lot of the big media companies are doing separate cloud storage, but mm -hmm. Amazon has been a great success story. So, mm -hmm. um, But I'm wondering about Hadoop. Are you using any Hadoop in yes. the cloud? Yes, yeah. absolutely. In Amazon? Yes, absolutely. What's we that look like? EMR. 
So basically, we will Elastic use MapReduce, for the folks out there who don't know EMR yet. Right. So, uh, you know, once our analysts have kind of studied and understood the data, built their algorithm, now we need to scale it, right? So we, we probably trained it on a couple of billion records. Now we need to turn it on and have it, you know, basically run algorithmically against yeah. billions and billions of records yeah, yeah. every day, right? So that's where EMR I'm smiling because that's really hard to do. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's and not trivial. Train and it, as training a systems machine. engineer and a technologist, yeah. you know, the ability, yeah. you know, we got EMR up and running in two days, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, on Amazon, I'd say the hardware isn't as efficient as you would get on your own colo or your own hardware, but this, the ease of really spinning up that cluster and running these large jobs is so still so, so that's point a to that's make. a map R distro is that right is mm -hmm. that, uh, so, so can you talk about that a little bit what's your experience been with the uh, the map R it's you know it's worked for us I mean we really haven't had any issues right so I mean from day one um, you, you know, don't I'd think about it <laughs> yeah I, the, the <laughs> only that's ma a map R would like to hear that that's exactly yeah. the data yeah. in the data cosm era we're living in <laughs> that's yeah. the new buzzword <laughs> right. <laughs> You know, so <laughs> we've had, you know, maybe occasional hardware outages in the middle of a large job. Um, that's the biggest thing we've run into, but I think those were more sort of Amazon infrastructure issues versus the software stack. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, and then, um, so the the primary requirement from the, from the standpoint of in-memory analytics mm -hmm. was really the business model of pay by the drink. That was mm -hmm. the thing that was most attractive. Yes. But, but the tech's got to be there too in this demanding world of, you know, mm -hmm. real time and you know, yeah. uh, 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 offline analytics. Right? Mm -hmm. Talk about that a little bit. And so, then, uh, you know, we, we tend not to be real-time. We're not a real-time system, yeah. but, uh, you know, for near our world, time. it's near-time, yeah. exactly. And, uh, you know, the ability to get this into memory and quickly understand the data is key to us. So, you know, I think the biggest benefit we got out of Cognitio, though, was as a small company running a large HPC cluster or a cluster of clusters on Amazon, you know, we're getting a supercomputer that, you know, I would have drooled over yeah 10 yeah years right. ago yeah. if I had that hardware sitting in my, you know, in my own building. Okay, right. Steve, final question, because we we're getting the hook here. The planes are starting to back up on the runway, as Mark yeah. Hopkins likes to say. Um, so talk about uh, what you see for the next 12 to 24 months in the industry. You're out there on the front edge, ela Elastic MapReduce, really strategic to Amazon. Netflix is on there. You're, you're doing some amazing work. Hadoop's emerging, you got a bunch of systems out there. What do you see for the next 24 months in terms of the evolution of the technology? Obviously in memory and flash has been fantastic, but right. what are the things that, that, are, that you're watching, trends that you're watching and paying close attention right. to? So, you know, one of the things is Hadoop is great at running a single job and running it well, you know, just a large job, single threaded. Data warehouses are about kind of exploring the data and, you know, really running lots of different algorithms and queries against it in a more ad hoc way. I think the two worlds are going to come closer together again. So you had the early phase where Hadoop went out and kind of solved the big data problem for a very specific use case of how you would process data. But you did lose some of the things that a schema and a SQL and relational database and a Can data warehouse gives you in terms of being able to slice understand and, dice. and slice and dice your data. So I'm seeing a lot of vendors out there start to figure out how to put that together, right? Don't want to name names yet because I think everybody's really early, but I think that's the problem. Well, we're going to talk to on. Ben Werther, the CEO of Platform, who just launched his company, who claims he could slice and dice in real time, mm -hmm. uh, managing with SQL, and we got to adapt. We got the Showcase Award. Um, Cognitio has great technology, and great to meet those guys on this trip at IBM event. So, yep. hey, congratulations! Thanks for coming on the Cube. Right. Congratulations on your funding. Thanks for um, having as me. As reported in the press, it's 4.2 million, and uh, on top of a million dollar <laughs> seed round. <laughs> and uh, congratulations! Guys. I think I find that. Uh, this is the Cube. We're yeah, very yeah, friendly. Yeah, yeah. We'll be right back well. with our next guest, Ben uh, Werther, after this short break. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. All right, great. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you.